Hello, the Jimmy Akio here, ready to discuss the huge super fight between, and my prediction for the big super fight between Gervonta Tank Davis and King Ryan Garcia. Now, this fight is so huge that it sold out the 20,000 seat AT&T Arena in Vegas in five minutes. This is something that's never, it's, it's, it's one, probably the biggest fight in boxing at this time. So what I'm talking about now, what we're going to talk about is the fighters, and I think I'm going to start with uh, the King Ryan Garcia. He's the one that actually pursued this fight to make it happen. He did a lot of things to get this fight. And at the end of the video, I'll, I'll do my prediction on who I think is going to win this fight. Now, uh, a little about, about the fighters. Ryan Garcia started fighting at age seven uh, when he started having problems with the team sport of, of baseball. I guess he didn't like how some of the things worked with the team, so he wanted a one-on-one -on -one type sport. So he, his uncle turned him on to boxing, and then that's all she wrote. Now, Garcia had like one of those phenomenal amateur records of 215 and 15 with 15 national titles, which is basically, which is incredible, which is crazy. That's insane amount of titles. He's got national titles at that. And uh, <clears throat> that's what made uh, Golden Boy Promotions uh, really try to get Ryan Garcia for their, for, for their team, which he did sign with them. And Ryan, before he even started having really big success as a, as a, uh, as a fighter, he, he became very successful on social media. So actually that, that helped him a lot, become one of the most marketable fighters in, uh, right now in boxing. Now, uh, Ryan has, uh, he has um, big uh, sponsors such as uh, Gymshark, which is a apparel and accessory brand. He also worked with 1800, te uh, 1800 Tequila and has done some modeling work as well and done some charity work with Bicycle Relief and Breast Cancer Awareness. Now to talk about uh, how big of a star uh, Ryan Garcia is, his, he's, they call him the social media king. That's because he has 9.2 million followers on Instagram, 1.34 million subscribers on YouTube, uh, 4.8 million on TikTok, and 70,000 uh, followers on uh, Twitter as well. Now, Ryan Garcia's uh, net worth right now as of 2023 is $20 million. I mean, that shows you the what the uh, what social media, being a social media star can do for you. I mean, look at Jake Paul. Same thing as Jake Paul. And uh, Ryan got hooked up with Jake Paul too. That helped him as well, because Jake has a massive following as well. So $20 million for uh, King Ryan Garcia. He seems like a really good guy to the fans as well, so I really like Ryan. Um, but here's a little bit more about him. Ryan Garcia was born on August 8th, 1998, in Victorville, California. He has three sisters and a brother, who is also a professional boxer. Garcia participated in various sports as a kid, and gravitated towards boxing at the age of seven. Garcia's parents approved of him taking up the sport, believing it would teach him discipline and skills that would benefit him for his whole life. Garcia started his training at his local boxing gym. The gym only allowed training from the age of eight and up. So Garcia's uncle, Sergio Garcia, stepped in and said he would help Ryan to carry on with his newfound passion. With Ryan showing his parents that he would dedicate himself to boxing, his father Henry converted their garage into a boxing gym and took over the trainer role from Sergio. Times were tough financially for the family, but they tried their best to shield Ryan from this so he could concentrate on developing his skills as a fighter. They've, they've been on this boxing journey with me, they've been through hell and back for me. With barely enough money to feed the whole family, they still managed to travel around the US to participate in junior boxing tournaments. The financial sacrifices were worth it, with Ryan becoming a 15-time national amateur boxing champion and amassed an amateur record of 215 wins with just the 15 losses. Hello, Jimmy Akio back. Um, now we're going to talk about Gervonta Tank Davis. Now, Davis got his nickname from an old coach that said his head was oversized compared to his body. And then uh, the nickname just stuck. So Davis is from the Sandtown Winchester community in West Baltimore, which is one of the highest crime rates, crime areas in the city. And he himself said some several of his friends had got murdered there. 
Now his dad was incarcerated and his mother was addicted to drugs. So at age five, Family Services actually took Davis to a group home. So he stayed there for a while. And that's when he started training as a boxer at Uptown Boxing Gym under Calvin, uh, I believe it's Calvin Ford. Calvin Ford, who was once incarcerated, incarcerated himself for 10 years. So he attended Digital Harbor High School, but he dropped out because um, he wanted to focus on boxing, but still he earned his diploma through a GED program. And actually Davis's uh, trainer, it's just kind of weird. He, he uh, is actually the inspiration for the character Dennis Cuddy Wise on HBO's The Wire. And Tank also has endorsement deals with Under Armour. So Davis had an amazing amateur career. Uh, he had a 215, he had a 215, 206 and 15 amateur record. He had three time national silver gloves uh, champions. He was a two time PAL champion, 2012 national golden gloves champion, and also the 2012 USA national championship participant. He turned pro at 18 years old, knocking out his opponent in one round. And takes net worth as of 2023 is $4 million. Now, a lot of people wonder how that is because when Tank fought Rolando Romero, he actually made $5 million, a $2 million guarantee, and then he had a percentage of the uh, pay-per-view. So in, in essence, he, he got over $5 million. So $5 million for that one fight. But people don't seem to understand that the managers get a 33 and a third percent cut from the pay, and the trainer gets 10%. And don't forget Uncle Sam, the taxes they take, so the fighter gets about less, probably less than 50% of that actual pay that you actually hear them getting. So 5 million turned out to be under 2.5 million, um, probably under that too. So you're gonna get a less, little bit less than half of uh, the money that you they say you get. That's a standard your manager cut at 33 and a third percent and trainer usually gets 10%. And then you go from there. But anyways, uh, let's hear more uh, from Tank Davis himself. All the guys that I came up with that was older than me, they got killed. If you have one feet in the streets and one feet in the gym, it's not going to work. You got to be all way committed with something. That's the choice. That's the real condition. The push, you got to push for it. Like, God damn it. So I got it happen? Tank and I and the kids around us that's with us on these levels, man, they seen a lot of death in the gym. So he really like, ooh. And he just buckled down, tightened up his boots, didn't look back. Somebody got killed right here, that, I think that's his name. They tried to rob him, and you know, um, he tried to fight back, so they shot him. They shot him to death, and they killed him right here. Three years ago, Javante returned to a West Baltimore block he grew up on. What's going on? I was telling him how I, I, uh, I actually fought him too before. Yeah, I fought him. I, I was telling him how I fought. Daddy coming in front. Truth is all that's how I remember it. I mean, I just, I was a fighter at heart. In 1999, with his father in prison and his mother battling addiction, Javante was placed into child protective services at age five, shuttling between foster homes and shelters. His route to success was steep. As a child growing up, that's a little rough. Coming from a group home and, you know, uh, watch my mom and dad do drugs and things like that. Some people use it, you know, as an excuse. And me, I just use it as my motivation. Man, I'm so proud of you, Johnny. Thank you. Seriously, when I think of where you came from, where you at, yeah. Ain't nothing but pride for you, boy. Yeah. Nothing but pride for you. Now you can come back and go down the brick, get some of the knuckleheads on the right path, huh? Well, definitely. It was hard enough to get you on the right <laughs> path, man. Right? Tank was different. Bad. Goodness grief. Sometimes I still hear his voice in the back of my head. Go scalping, go scalping. You know, but he was a good bad. At age seven, Javante took the first steps on his journey to finding the gym, the man, and the purpose that would define him. He met Coach Cal at Upton Boxing, and the trainer knew of the daunting obstacles ahead. Calvin had served 10 years in prison for drug offenses. 
before transforming into a beacon for kids like Javante. I was fighting a lot in school, fighting a lot on the streets, and they brought us to the gym, and I, I'm the one that stuck with it. When I came to the gym, you know, I felt the love that I needed as a child, you know, so that, that's what kept me into the gym. You know what I know, it's like Coward Ford. Coach Coward basically raised me. I always wanted to have somebody like a Coward in my corner, you know, so that sums it all up. I get emotional because of all the hard work we put in. Tank didn't have a silver spoon in his mouth. You understand? He came from the dirt with this. So when they look at it, it's just not about boxing. If you put your mind to it and really work hard, anything is possible. Put the right people around you, anything is possible. Now about the fight in general, about the fight itself. A lot of people are making it a 50-50 fight. Uh, they can't, there's still some, so many scenarios that could happen in this fight, such as the one of the main ones I hear is that um, Tank Davis is gonna start off slow, figure out Brian Garcia, and near the end start breaking him down, and at the end will knock him out in the, la in the later rounds. Then I hear the other, the other, uh, Theory that goes comes up the scenario is Ryan Garcia is too fast, too tall, too big, longer reach, hits too hard. Something that uh, Davis has never faced before a fighter that hits as hard as Ryan Garcia or is as fast as Ryan Garcia. I don't think Davis has fought somebody that is that fast and hits that hard as Ryan Garcia is. So I hear a lot of that about how he's never faced that kind of fighter. But the facts are, um, Gervonta Davis has beaten six undefeated fighters in his pro career. And uh, Ryan Garcia will be number seven. Ryan Garcia is the seventh undefeated fighter that he will face. But he has beaten the six other ones. Now, right now, Gervonta Davis has 26-0 uh, and 0 right now with 24 KOs. Okay? That's, these are the facts. He has won five titles in three different divisions. Okay. Um, making him one of the few in boxing history to accomplish this feat. Actually, under 60 fighters in boxing history have done this. Three, three titles in three different divisions. So he's one of the very few that have done something so incredible, such as that. And uh, Tank has fought three undefeated fighters in, the, in, the last, in his last four fights. He knocked out all three undefeated fighters. Ryan Garcia will be the fourth undefeated fighter he fought in the last five fights. Okay. Now, um, Ryan Garcia has never faced an undefeated fighter in the pro ranks before Javante Davis. So, go with that one. Garcia's last fight was nine months ago. Okay. And Davis' last fight was three months ago. Now, my, my pick is simply of stats. Okay. Um, I think... That Dervonti Davis will beat Garcia, probably because um, when when Garcia fought, uh, he he's been beating all these guys. Uh, it's really not really. It's it's basically it's all all Garcia. The only trouble and struggle he had was with uh, with Luke Campbell who dropped him. Now remember that was a it was a good shot, uh, a one punch knockdown. He got right back up. And he fought back on, and in almost every round that he fought Luke Campbell, he was winning every round, except for that round he got knocked down. And he came back even stronger, and that showed that his, he had perseverance, and he, he went through a struggle and kind of beat. But that's the only struggle I've ever seen him in. He's just too much for everybody. Now I'm starting to think, is it because he's just too fast? He hits too hard? Uh, is Garcia that amazing that with his massive power that he, he makes these fights not so competitive? Um, so that's one thing that I'm trying to think of here, but I, I've seen, uh, Davis, he would lose rounds. He could, you know, he'd be getting, you know, he'd be getting caught a few times, but he never really get really hurt. But, and I never really, really seen him really, really, really hurt, but he would lose rounds. He'd, he'd have a little bit of a struggle. He had some struggles in there, but he'd always persevere in the end and get the guy. So that's what I saw. 
And I just don't think that uh, Garcia has been through enough of those back and forth type moments to keep his mind, you know. I mean, I know he's focused and because he really wanted his fight and he's seen something in Davis that he thinks he can, that really believes he'll win. Because this fight is not for a title. This is just a, a fight. No titles are on the line right now. <clears throat> so we got to remember that. <clears throat> so this, this, I'm just picking this, I'm picking my pick off of just the stats that I see. I'm picking Davis by a uh, uh, late round knockout or unless he catches him early, you know, because Davis is a fantastic counter puncher. Not saying that Ryan isn't because right now I'm not counting out Ryan Garcia either. But if I had to pick somebody, I'm picking Davis just off of the stats I've seen and all the things that I've seen through Davis in his hard, in his hard, he's been battle tested. He's, he has a lot of metal, all the things he's been through in life, and he's still able to climb up. Now, we also got to worry about the uh, uh, where his mind is at, too, Javante Davis. Now, it could be something different, too. Now, <clears throat> Javante Davis has a very big court date. He's going to be sentenced May 7th for a hit-and-run accident. Now, if he's convicted, he's going to be facing seven years in prison minimum. Seven years in prison minimum for what he did and um, and the conflict he caused through the hit and run, uh, which actually uh, injured a lot of uh, injured some people. So uh, he could be in very, very big trouble there. So I don't know what's in his mind, if that's in the back of his mind or if he's just concentrating. As far as I've seen, Davis has been a very focused fighter. And I don't think that will really mess, mess, mess with him, even though it could be in the back of his mind. You know, at this point right now, I'm picking Davis six of the of the stats that I've had and watching him fight all throughout the years and how focused this guy is. Not saying that Ryan is not, but being a social media star and stuff like that has kind of taken things away. And he's been out for over nine months and uh, and so forth. Not that saying that Ryan can prove me wrong. He's got the great Joe Goosen in his corner, perfect for possible strategies. Uh, he's the best in the business for that. So you can't, you can't say that, but my pick right now is for Davis 60-40. And but I'm not saying now if if uh Garcia would win, it wouldn't surprise me either. Just because he's got that talent. You can't become a 15 time national amateur champion with not having no skill or talent. There's just no way. Now Garcia hits very hard, extremely hard puncher, very fast, very quick movements and stuff like that. So I think he has the ability to do it. But the only reason I'm doing it is because I didn't, I haven't seen him really struggle in, in a pro fight. I haven't seen him with the, their, that kind of experience where he needs to, you know, up and down, not knowing if he's. There's times when you, it looks like you're really losing it, and, and it's hard sometimes to get back that rhythm. As a former fighter, amateur and pro, and sparring partner for big world champions, I felt that before, so I know the struggle. I'm not as talented as Ryan Garcia was. I, I wasn't as fast as he was or hit as hard as he was. But um, that's that's how I see this fight happening. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan could knock him out early by getting a really quick shot. But like I said, I don't think uh, Davis has fought someone that hits as hard as Ryan Garcia so fast. And sometimes you get hurt by the punches you don't see. And that's the thing. I've seen big fighters like uh, Doug DeWitt, who fought Tommy Hearns, Matthew Hilton, some of the biggest punchers in the division, and not get hurt by him. Then he fought this other guy named Jose Cuenos. I forgot the guy's last name, but he had like 20 wins and only like eight knockouts. And he knocked out Doug DeWitt. I mean, he was out. Knocked him out like really bad. And that just shows you sometimes it's just not the punch. Sometimes it's just if you catch somebody in the right moment at the right time. So I could see Garcia doing that. I could see Tank doing that. But right now, what I pick is from what I've seen, is Davis by 60-40% chance that he, uh, he'll win 60-40. I'm picking Davis. So this is Jimmy Akio. And I, <clears throat> please like and subscribe my video and share my video. And uh, please watch my next video. I'm going to be a, doing uh, a video on my Hall of Fame wall. Uh, boxing wall in my boxing training area and you're in my arcade room right now if you look behind me you see my 3d wallpaper of the spaceship and then uh, I'll show you all that in uh, my arcade room and also explain my hall of fame uh, picture to have up but right now it's Jimmy Akio signing off saying thank you so much
And here we go. Goodbye.